Welcome to Bit of Armaments YouTube channel. I'm Jason Prather, a firearms enthusiast and deputy sheriff. Today's not going to be a review, it's going actually going to be a story from the evidence room. Basic synopsis is there was a vehicle fire in the small hours of the morning. The vehicle was extinguished, and when the investigating deputies went through the vehicle, they located a firearm that had some pretty severe fire damage. They made the proper notifications once they determined that it could not be made safe or verified safe. And I was notified in the morning to come out and assist them. This is a basic synopsis of how I made sure that firearm was safe for storage. Due to some suspicious circumstances surrounding that incident, I'm not going to use any footage of that gun. I'm instead going to use the Smith & Wesson Model 10. Actually, it's, I believe it's a pre-10, uh, but it'll serve very well. So, the vehicle fire had managed to cook off all of the rounds in the cylinder. However, due to some damage, that the gun had taken, the de submitting deputy was unable to open the cylinder and verify that the firearm was unloaded. So to begin my checks, I actually just found a tie wrap floating around the evidence room and ran it down the chamber. Use just pinched off the length. And as you can see, the length of the tie wrap matches all the way down to the end of the cylinder. That would indicate that there is not a loaded round in there. To further check, because it is a revolver, I just took my zip tie and checked each one of the cylinders. That was actually a five shot, so it was a little easier. But in this case, the tie wrap went in deep enough to verify that there were no loaded rounds in the cylinder. The head evidence custodian was familiar enough with checking the length of the bore due to him being a Civil War reenactor, so he was good with that. I could have left it there. However, I decided to take it on further and see if I could actually clear the chamber. Because of the damage involved, my first step was to remove cylinder lever. And it did function. At that point I started the cylinder out and made sure it was clear. Flipped it over and because it was a damaged firearm and it should not be ever brought back into service, we went ahead and tapped the cylinder out with a screwdriver butt and then drove all of the expended rounds out of the cylinders. Now this method will work regardless of firearm type. Just run the object all the way down the barrel, making sure not to touch the trigger or the hammer. Get a length and check your overall length from the muzzle to the end of the cylinder and that would show that you're clear. If it was not clear there would be an obstruction somewhere about in this area just behind the forcing cone and in this case this would be just over an inch long with the, the original 38 and the 38 Smith & Wesson it's somewhere about an inch and a quarter which is a noticeable difference when you just line up a guide rod right next to it you'd be able to tell for sure that there was a loaded round in there 